Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. And welcome to episode 70 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff. <laughs> and today we are going to be focusing on fun, actually. I know we always talk about stuff that's really serious around here, uh, network programmability, software development concepts, all this stuff. But today we thought we'd just have some fun with our returning guest, John Capobianco. John, John, if you don't mind introducing yourself and telling everyone about your new role. Yeah, so I'm a Cisco certified systems instructor now with the Cisco training bootcamp team. And we deliver automation boot camps. And uh, I'm just having the time of my life with Cisco. I have some new clothes on <laughs> from the Cisco store. And uh, I, I couldn't turn down this opportunity because I, I'm a really big fan of having fun, obviously, but fun with APIs. And uh, I, I really look forward to today's discussion. Yeah, so uh, John reached out to us and he said, hey, guys, I know we're um, always talking about APIs having to do with network infrastructure and, and uh, controller platforms and all this stuff. Can we do things that are just like fun? And uh, we said, sure. So let's talk about it. John, can you start out with uh, some of these APIs that you like to play around with? Sure. So what I think is neat about APIs is that you can pick your hobby, something you're interested in, be it sports or art, dogs, outer space, almost any personal interest <laughs> hobby, there's likely a REST API out there on the internet. And um, there, it's like opening the door to this world of networking, programming, front-end development, back-end development, Python. It, and, and what I believe is that you can have fun while you learn, and you can learn while you have fun. And as you're having fun, it takes away the tedium of reading books after work or feeling like you're doing something because you're compelled to do it for your job. You can pick a hobby and go find an API and start playing with it. So what are we what are we talking what are we playing with today, John? So I've got a couple examples. And right now I'm gonna show you something that I've written a little application for really people of all ages. And I think that you know, the younger, the better. And I think parents watching this, if you're wondering, how do I get my children interested in computers and programming and coding? Well, everybody loves Pokemon, right? So I let's do. take a look at this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is say Python 3, and I'm going to say, get Pokemon info. And it's going to ask me to type the name of the Pokemon you're trying to catch. So let's do a Pikachu and make sure I spell this right. And as you can see, I get the text information in a file of all of the information from the Pikachu. Now, let's take it a step further and do uh, create Pokemon website. And I'm gonna do Pikachu again. And right away, instantaneously, I have this HTML page with the images. So all of the sprites from the game, the background, the base statistics, all of their attacks and the games, their abilities, all kinds of neat stuff. And um, if anyone's interested, please go to my YouTube channel. I've made a video that parents and children can follow along to build this for themselves. Now, the other thing that I just absolutely love doing to the point of registering a domain name, <laughs> mind-map.fun, is to use these REST APIs. And I mentioned, like, this is Darth Vader from the Star Wars API. This is Canada's information from the world, the nations of the world API. And there's all kinds of examples with links to the repositories and readme files. And let me show you a couple of neat ones here. John, hold on. You, you can't you can't talk about what you've done with the Pokemon APIs and what you've done without showing us some code. This is DevNet. We got to see something. So go back. <laughs> oh, you want to see? Some and let's code. look at what yeah, actually you've let's done. Let's take a look at the code. Okay, let's look at the website Pokemon. And yeah, this is I'm just a little. You've done. It's it's less than fifty lines of code. If you took out the comments and the spaces, it's probably like twenty lines of code. So we import JSON, we import requests, and requests is the key library here. 
that lets us interact with APIs with Python. And you know me, I'm all about the Jinja 2 templates. So I take yep. that JSON and I, I use a simple template. And here's the template that makes the tables and makes the gallery and calls the images all from the JSON data. And it really is a simple little bit of code, right? If the result is okay, then go get the JSON and register it, and then make an outputted HTML page from the template. Almost anybody could do this. You know, I'm not special. I, I just had fun with it. So what's neat is that what I think about having fun with APIs is that you're gonna subconsciously pick up new skills. How do I, you know, I, I might use something like Postman to begin with, just to get the JSON back. Well, some APIs need authentication tokens. Some of them are paginated. And these are gonna lead you to Google searches and internet searches and reading about Python and reading about, how do I deal with a paginated API? How do I then take that JSON and make an HTML page? What if I wanted to make a database of all of my favorite football team statistics over the year? Well, then I'm going to have to learn some back-end development and how to get the JSON into a database. So it really is, it, it just, it's compounded learning and you're going to pick up skills that you're not really even realizing because you're having so much fun. <laughs> I think there's also a lesson here too is, you know, if if you're looking to build an application, and your that application requires some data set. I don't think you have like back in the days you actually had to generate that data set and figure out how to do it. Now there's an API for it where you can just go grab it, and this is kind of demonstrated in a fun, cool way uh, with John here. So yeah, Kareem, we've been doing this what? wrong for years now. You know, we yeah. were we were sticking <laughs> either to. Uh, you know, topical, uh, hey, what do we get back from the DNAC controller? And, yep. uh, you know, maybe we'll do deck of cards, but whatever, snooze. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now we have all these APIs at our, at, our, uh, at our fingertips to do all this fun kind of work. And, I mean, John, you nailed all the lessons that can be taken from that. Well, one uh, thing I'll add to that, Matt, before John shows us what he's done here with the mind map, but do you remember when we ran the, um, we, we ran a, a Minecraft server on top yeah. of an XE box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was fun. That was so fun. we do have fun. <laughs> so we do have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Matt, you make just an excellent point about talking about DNA Center and using that API. Well, what we're talking about is a really small step. If you're having fun with API, you're working with JSON and working with requests in Python, it's a small step. What's the difference between Pokemon or NASA space data and your RESTConf <laughs> data or your APIC data. Like it's it's really the same thing. It's just different data. It's interface counters and OSPF neighbors. Whereas I'm looking at Pokemon abilities, right? It's it's the foundational ability to work with APIs. And Kareem, on your point about data sets, that's exactly it. How do I develop something without data? Well, Major League Baseball's API goes all the way back to 1876. Every team, every <laughs> roster, every player, every statistic. Wow. Um, the NASA, so what's really neat, one of my favorite ones, and this is kind of cool, the, the rover on Mars relays, now you're not going to the rover directly, right, over space, but it relays data back to NASA periodically, which then we can go to the NASA API and make, say, a CSV file of the temperature on Mars and chart that every day. Just run the, your little script once a day, go get the Mars API data, and now you know what the temperature on Mars has been over a month. It, it's just incredible. The bottom yeah. line is, the bottom line is, you know, it's just like, it's just like grammar, right? Like you learn grammar, you know how to formulate a sentence. You learn how to make maybe. an API call, maybe, yeah. You learn how to make an <laughs> API call, the the pieces to it. You can call any API and you can build any application. It's literally this easy. And this is kind of what John is is showing us here. 
Yeah, exactly, Kareem. I mean, when we kind of talk about that, when we go through our, our sessions or our teaching moments where we say, listen, I'm just teaching you this API because this is the one that's in front of me, but the documentation should be the same, the experience should be relatively the same, or at least you're getting a foundational aspect to your learning so that you can transfer it to other areas. And now it's just, hey, find out what interests you and, and poke into that API. We saw Quinn in past episodes go through APIs that tied into weather data so he could smoke his meats, apparently. Or, well, I know you've used APIs in the past, Kareem, to brew beer. Yeah. Um, so those, all those things are, are out there in the world. So um, unfortunately, John, thank you for joining us again and just kind of starting to get people excited about uh, just seeing what APIs are out there. And um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. So uh, we'll have you back again. Maybe we can d d uh, dive a little bit deeper into some of these other fun APIs available to us. Thanks for having me. I love doing these. This is like the highlight of my week. I've had a lot of fun. And if you do something cool with your APIs, tag me on Twitter. I'd love to see what you come up with, community. Thank you. Snackers, thank you for joining us and hit us up next time on DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Snackers. Thanks.